and then we'll take some questions on any other subject that you'd like as well. Last year, you may or may not know that a leading bookmaker asked 2,500 people what they love most about Britain, and the top answer was the countryside, even beating the Queen and fish and chips. Yet the old politicians of the old parties are, in my opinion, completely ignoring the countryside right now. We know that Labour has really always been a party of the city, never much cared for our green and present land. So it was no surprise when, shortly before the last general election in 2010, 100 Labour MPs called for more homes to be built on the green belt. The Tories hit back, promising to protect the green belt, just like they did again last week. But I'm afraid their words are weasel words and highlight the con in Conservative. Over the past five years, the number of houses that have actually been built on Greenbelt land under the Conservative-led government has more than doubled. The Tories have broken their promise and shown even more hatred for the countryside than Labour. They are the ones that have been responsible for concreting over our precious green fields at a rate faster than any other government in history. To add insult to injury, the Tories did this despite promising local people more say over what happens in their area back in their last manifesto. Localism, they called it. In reality, they introduced what was effectively a developer's charter called the National Planning Policy Framework, which argued against conservation and for a presumption in favour of development. In essence, this has given developers a green light to build just about anywhere and to hell with what the locals think. Neither does it matter whether there are enough local school places, enough health services, any decent public transport or road networks, what pressure there might be on local water or power supplies. The rush to solve the housing crisis takes priority over everything and especially the countryside. You couldn't trust the Tories with the countryside in 2010, and whatever they might say at their manifesto launch today, you can't trust them with the countryside now. And I think voters need to consider this very carefully, particularly if they live in rural areas. Once the countryside's gone, it's gone. You can't get our green fields back once they've been lost. And this isn't just about beauty, it's about our food security too. Only 1.3% of our British workforce now works in agriculture, and we are importing 40% of our food, which is far too much. We must reverse this trend if we're to avoid being exposed to volatile global food and animal feed markets, which push up prices dramatically for producers and, of course, then for consumers too. Three years ago, the Conservative Planning Minister, Nick Bowles, warned that two million acres of green fields need to be sacrificed for housing. To put that into context, that's the equivalent of concreting over half of Wales, or the entire county of Devon, together with an area seven times the size of Windsor Great Park. But yes, we're desperate for housing. This is the cry that goes up, isn't it? Why? Demographic changes, more of us living alone, our growing population. But funny, there's very rarely, if ever, any mention of the I word, immigration. No mention of the fact that over 600,000 people came to live in Britain last year, over 500,000 the year before that, and almost half a million too before that, and back we go. Seven, more mil seven million more people arriving under Blair and Brown, and two million more under Cameron. It's ironic, I think, to think that some of those migrants may very well have been drawn to Britain because our land is so green and pleasant. Net immigration is now at an all-time high. If we want to have any countryside left for ourselves and for others to enjoy, we have to stop uncontrolled immigration and relieve the pressure on demand for housing, schools, healthcare services, transport, policing and the benefit system. It's only UKIP that has the holistic answer to this, one that eases the pressure of immigration and does the right thing by our countryside, and that's our Australian-style points-based system. UKIP is the party that will protect the Greenbelt. We feel very passionately about this. We see the sense in shoring up our food security and keeping our most loved British icon, the countryside, for future generations. We'll prioritise bringing Britain's 300,000 odd empty homes back into use and incentivise developers to build one million homes on brownfield sites by 2025, long before we even begin to consider allowing the destruction of our precious greenbelt. And even then, we'll be talking about small developments of six to 12 houses on the edges of villages, not outrageous mass developments 
like the 360 houses planned for Bicton, the village where I went to school near Shrewsbury in Shropshire, and which I hope to attend a meeting about tonight. The locals are furious, and quite rightly so. UKIP will also give local people the final say on major developments through a binding referendum. If 5% of the electors in their area say they don't want a large development, they won't get it. And this, I'd like to say to Mr Cameron, to Mr Pickles, this is real localism. I'd just like to finish by saying I really do believe, as a former country girl myself and as someone who still has a house and lives in Shrewsbury and Shropshire, that both Labour and Tories abandoned it long ago. But today, UKIP really is the only party of the countryside. Thank you. Right, we're open to questions. Suzanne and Patrick, Joe Coburn at the BBC. Do you agree with Nigel Farage when he certainly hinted that in areas where UKIP has no hope of winning the seat, that they should vote Tory? Uh, no, he didn't either say or hint that. He simply recognised that in some seats, some voters may indulge in tactical voting. Uh, actually, the seats he has in mind are places like Great Grimsby, Dudley North, Haywood and Middleton, where if you're a previously Tory-inclined voter, you absolutely know that if you vote Tory, you'll be helping Labour uh, get into power, whereas if you, can, if you vote UKIP, UKIP can win the seat and keep Labour out. But uh, as leader of UKIP and as the leadership team for UKIP, the message is 100%. We support every UKIP candidate. We're maximising the votes uh, for every UKIP candidate uh, in the country. And we're getting back fantastic reports about uh, the reception people are get, getting, even in some of the seats that weren't our uh, top targets, places like Mid Norfolk or Northamptonshire South. We're right in the, right in the running, right in the mix. But there's an acceptance you need tactical voting in order to shore up your support. No, I, I think, you know, if you were a Tory inclined voter, say in Great Grimsby or Dudley North, where, you know, your candidate's just self combusted uh, and there is, a, there is a sort of 25% resi residual Tory vote, but the polls are showing that it's a knife edge battle between UKIP and Labour. You've got you've got a decision to make. You know you're quite entitled to stick to your to your previous choice, but uh, we think that that met very many uh, supporters, residual supporters, former supporters of the other so-called main parties, uh, prefer UKIP uh, than their direct rival. If you're talking about Labour and the Tories, because they're their uh, rivalry is so long established. Hello, uh, John Seams from the Daily Mail. Um, where's your environment and housing spokesman today and why is he not giving this speech? And Suzanne, you talk about your house in Shrewsbury. How many houses do you have and do you think second <laughs> homes are a problem? <laughs> I have um, two, and a, two and a third homes. I have a flat in London, I have a flat in Shrewsbury, and I have a share in a house that myself and my family bought for my daughter, who's at university. I was deeply concerned about the huge amount of debt that she was racking up as a student. And so I sold my one house in London and, uh, and, and bought the others. Um, it's something I feel very passionately about, student debt. My daughter wanted to do a long degree course um, the amount of rent she was paying for pretty appalling accommodation, frankly, was shocking. So that's why I sold up and I think did the decent thing by my daughter and I hope nobody would criticise me for that. And if, if I can answer your uh, other question, Andrew Sharalambos, our excellent housing spokesman, I know where he is because I spoke to him this morning, he is in Wisbeach in North East Cambridgeshire where he's standing uh, and when you, where UKIP also has the Conservatives on the run with uh, uncontrolled immigration being an absolutely massive issue uh, in those Fenland towns, so uh, he is campaigning there today. And this wasn't, I should say, a big speech. This is a presentation to raise an issue that we think is, is very important in in the campaign. He's already made his big housing speech, actually. I don't know if you were there, but he's certainly done that. Uh, ben Glaze, Daily Mirror. So just to go back to John's question, do you think second home ownership is an issue then? Um, well, I don't think, I mean, I think there are much bigger issues. Um, you know, my, my, my homes are both very modest and, 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 and quite small, really. 
Um, I think immigration, as I've said today, is the bigger issue. And if you look at the huge amounts of people coming into the country, into the country then that is surely a priority for any government. But the others are simply refusing to look at it. And there's no doubt that that is the biggest demographic pressure that we have. And it's got to be sorted. And you, know, you look at the Labour Party manifesto yesterday. What a joke. We will control immigration. A single line. They're not planning to do anything more that the Tories haven't done over the past five years and utterly failed it. And I can't imagine that the Conservatives will bring forward any more plans today. Yeah. So, Clearly any party that wants to solve the housing crisis for the British people has to be able to say they will sharply reduce immigration and only one party can say that and that's UKIP. How, how many homes should Brits be allowed to own then? <laughs> well, it depends what they use them for, doesn't it? I mean, I think one of the things I do feel quite strongly about is that it's buy to let. There are uh, um, landlords who own, you know, huge amounts of properties and I think there might well be a, a question about that. Um, but... Uh, that's not the main issue here. I mean, as Suzanne says, I don't think we're not the sort of party that's going to put, put uh, limits on, on, no. on property ownership by the British people in their own country. Uh, but we do have some strong positions we take that with housing being a finite resource and uh, a resource that's in great shortage, we say, for instance, we would not allow non-British nationals in social housing to have the right to buy we would not allow non-British nationals to take advantage of help to buy schemes with taxpayer uh, incentives and equally today on the Housing Association uh, uh, policy that the Tories are going to be announcing, uh, we, we in general welcome anything that, that helps people achieve their ambitions and aspirations to be a homeowner, but we don't think foreign nationals again should be given discounts to, uh, to acquire property in this country when property 